I want to talk about a huge determining factor in success with people. I've watched it happen over and over again. It doesn't matter what you are trying to attain, but the speed in which you go to grab whatever you are trying to attain will determine your level of success because you have so much confidence going in so fast, you don't even know how to think. The minute that people start to think is the minute that they start to overthink. It's when doubt comes in, it's when fear creeps in. And I have seen so many people, and even myself, I notice when I'm operating at a level where I am just going in for the kill, I am just going in to get what I want, and I walk in with so much confidence, I walk in with so much energy, I walk in with so much power, that people that come in like that are not going to be stopped a lot of times because people are so out their ethics in day-to-day -day life, it's actually insane. These people can be sheeped into believing anything. They can be sheeped into doing anything. When you come in with that level of power, there is no fucking way that those people out there are going to stop you. And that is exactly how you are going to go and achieve your goals. We live in a society right now that they are trying to encourage you to take a break and take it slow and be safe, be cautious, think about this, think about that, think about it from a hundred angles before you do something. And I can tell you that I have had a ton of people in my life that have had that approach when it comes to decision making. And while I will tell them that, yeah, sure, I'm sure you avoided a lot of fuck ups in your life, absolutely. But the thing is, is I've actually lived 10 times more. I've taken 10 times more action. I've had 10 times more beautiful experiences. If I would have thought out one of my choices in life, I decided that when I was like 19, I was just gonna go to Alberta. I had barely any money. I didn't really think it out. I didn't even move out of my apartment fully. I like left it there and then ended up having to get my family to come and move stuff out of my apartment for me because I was staying so long in Alberta. None of it was planned. The arrival, the departure wasn't planned. I did have a job out there, but that was pretty much it. Other than that, I had a few hundred dollars in my pocket. I had a one-way ticket and that was the amount of planning that had happened. But let me tell you, if I would have sat there and if I would have thought of all of the pros and cons, and if I would have tried to look at it from absolutely every angle, I would have ended up cheating myself out of an amazing life experience. And I went and spent more time in Toronto. I actually traveled across Canada multiple times on my own. If I would have sat down and tried to think, oh, you know, I shouldn't take it too fast here. Oh, you know, well, maybe this will happen. You know, child trafficking is a thing and I look like a child. Like I look 12 traveling on my own. I wonder how that's gonna go. The world is a scary place and you know, it just keeps on getting worse. How do you think that that train of thought is going to motivate you to do anything. But also, how do you think that that train of thought is gonna serve you when you are literally on your deathbed and you look back at all of the things that you could have done, all of the people that you could have talked to, the places that you could have traveled to, and at the end of the day, bearing the weight of a little bit of stress of not knowing if you're gonna survive, a little bit of stress of not knowing if you're gonna have enough money, a little bit of stress, not knowing if you're gonna get kidnapped, I mean, that stress is a lot less than going to your deathbed, even though some people are like, are you fucking serious? Like, did she just say that? Yeah, I just said that, okay? That stress right there is very, very minimal compared to, I want you to close your eyes, I want you to think, okay? Imagine yourself on your deathbed or in this rocking chair when you know that you have the money but you don't have the time, when you know that you have the money but you don't have the health, when you know that you're at the end of your road. What kind of decisions are you wishing that you would have made when you had the time and you didn't have the money or when you had the time and you had the health to be able to do it, but you couldn't figure out exactly the means to do it and you didn't want to bear the weight of taking more stress on your shoulders because you truly believed that at the end of the day, it's a, it's a self-confidence thing. You truly believe at the end of the day, you're not gonna be able to figure it out. You truly believe at the end of the day that you're gonna fail. And so many people have the fear of failure and don't realize that when you have the failure, you will. Let me just make it so much easier for you. You're gonna go out there and you're gonna fall flat on your face, okay? And it's probably gonna happen in front of a lot of people. And if that gave you a little like, ooh, like that makes me not wanna do it, 
Understand that the amount of excitement and exhilaration that comes when you go out there after falling on your face in front of everyone and you end up winning at a higher level because you did that, the gratification that comes from that and the self-confidence that you build and that you now have, and by the way, that's something that no one can take from you. You can go out there and you can lose absolutely everything. I can lose this apartment. I could lose my dog. I could lose money. I could lose everything that I've built. But something that no one can take from me is my experience with myself, my self-confidence, my program, my routine, the fact that I show up, the fact that when I have a dream or a goal, I know that I'm going to be tenacious enough to literally fight through absolutely anything that is thrown my way and to keep on going, to understand that when you look at a goal and it looks really nice and then you do your affirmations in the mirror and you're like, I am worthy. I am deserving of this. I am healthy. And then you go out and you fail fucking 50 times and you realize that it's going to take you a hundred times more work than you thought. You at the end of the day in your subconscious mind have built the confidence to be able to face fears higher than anything else. You're like, okay, so you mean I just have to talk myself into doing one more rep of this? I just have to talk myself into doing this for one more day? Yes, that is exactly it. There's a quote that I heard once and it said essentially, you're not playing in business or in marriage or in anything else that you want to be successful in. You're not playing in there to win. You're playing in there to have a continuous game. And this actually came from one of the wars. There was two people that went to war in like the emperor moments of history. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a history expert. That's why I have blonde hair, but let me learn you a lesson. So one person was saying, I want to win this war. And the other person was saying, I want to stay alive and at war for as long as possible. He meant like his army. He wanted to stay at war for as long as possible. And the person who went in that just wanted to win the battle did not end up outlasting the person that was in there and just wanted to go for another battle, another battle, another battle, and that was his goal. He was playing an infinite game while the other guy was playing a finite game. And so when you're looking at your goals, when you're playing an infinite game, you need to be building skills, attributes, energy, confidence, all of these things at a level that you are able to show up day after day after day after day after day after day, long after everyone else has given up, long after everyone else has talked themselves out of it, they decided to play it safe, they decided that they didn't have the energy, they decided that they were gonna be a pussy and they don't have the fucking discipline to do it because they don't feel like it. And you know what? You're gonna keep on showing up and actually putting in the action over time you're gonna fall in love with the action, fall out of love with the result because you have a desire and you have this weird convoluted idea of what you're trying to build. But when you put yourself in action mode for so long, you end up loving the action. That's why you don't hear any rich and successful people that are truly rich and truly successful in every area of their life. You don't hear them say, oh, you know what? I'm planning my retirement. You know why? Because they have gotten so in love with showing up and pushing themselves and the gratification that comes from the discipline and they understand the cycle of motivation. So they keep on coming back. They keep on doing the same thing over and over again and they've fallen in love with that process. You never hear anyone that has reached that level of success say, oh, you know what? I really need to take a break or I'm looking forward to my retirement. They've created a lifestyle and a life that they truly love living every single day. And honestly, everything aside, rather you're trying to manifest better health, better relationship, or more abundance in your life, everyone is looking for the same thing, and that is to live a life every single day that they love. But when you chase the process and what you're doing each day, that is when you're gonna end up building a life that you actually love.